thus cried the longing of his disciples and initiates for centuries. All right, now, as I've said a few times, uh, Nietzsche thinks that this did not, in fact, cure the underlying problem. And he thinks that, basically, um, nobody in their right mind would think that this kind of stoking up of feelings of guilt um, would he said, be of use to the sick person. So it did relieve their pain, but at the cost of making them even sicker. That is, at the cost of denying their ability even further to express their will outwardly. Right? So the problem was that we're weak, that we're unable to make the world the way we want it to be, the way we desire it, the way we would will it to be. Therefore, we're suffering. So what the ascetic priest tells us to do is turn that will to power inward on ourselves. Um, come to hate our embodied existence. So on the one hand, this serves a psychological function of distracting us from our pain, because all uh, emotional excesses do that. On the other hand, it's precisely making us weaker. It's precisely telling us not to exert our will to power outside, outside of ourselves. Um, so this is confirming and affirming the weakness that is the source of the power. Okay, so um, I gotta go quickly here. Um, this, as I said, is the dominant ideal for the last 2,000 years. Nietzsche thinks it's dangerous and these days is in danger of collapsing into nihilism as we see that, as we see what it is. It's a way of redirecting our will to power inwardly. Um, so, what could possibly be an alternative, an alternative ideal? Well, the case that he discusses here as a possible alternative, which is going to turn out not to be an alternative at all, is science. Uh, so he asks whether perhaps science will give us a counter ideal to asceticism. <coughs> Um, I'm skipping ahead to 107, um, where he's asking, where is the other one goal? I'm told it's not lacking. It is not only, uh, it has not only fought a long successful battle with this ideal of asceticism, uh, but rather has already become lord over that ideal in all essential matters. I'm told that science, modern science, gives us this alternative. Um, uh, it said it's a true philosophy of reality. Uh, it clearly believes in itself alone. It clearly possesses the courage to itself, the will to itself, and has so far got along well enough without God, the beyond, and virtues that we need. However, he says, it ain't so. Um, um, line 21. Precisely the opposite of what is claimed here is the truth. Science has utterly no faith in itself today. Um, to say nothing of an ideal above itself, where it is at all, where it is at all, still passion, love, suffering. It is not the opposite of the ascetic ideal, but rather its most recent and noblest form. So science does not present a counter ideal to asceticism. It rather is a new, a new recent, uh, most noble, maybe highest, expression of this ascetic ideal. Um, I want to emphasize that this is not an attack on science, which is not saying we should uh, dismantle it or Reject it. He's simply pointing out that science doesn't give us an alternative system of values. It doesn't give us an alternative affirmation. 
it doesn't give us an alternative way of uh, striving for an outward expression of our will to power. Um, there's a couple points here. Um, first, science does rely on values. Um, it values at a minimum truth. At a minimum, science is predicated on striving for truth. It takes that to be a goal. It takes that to be um, worth striving for, worth trying to accomplish. And yet, science itself gives no justification for that. Science itself, that is internal to the practice of science, we're not going to get any account of why truth is good, of why truth is worth striving for. So a chemist practicing science in his lab is striving to get the truth. That's the goal, to figure out how the chemicals react. But if you ask the chemist why that truth is worth pursuing, The answer that he's going to give is not going to be given by chemistry. He's not going to do an experiment with chemicals to try to figure out why truth is worth pursuing. So the practice of science depends on valuing things that the science itself can't justify. The value of pursuing those goals. I'll say this in the long lines of, I think I heard before, science is metaphysics proclaimed to not be metaphysics, and that it makes its own... Okay, except so for, for Nietzsche, um, he, he would not say it's metaphysics. It's depending on values, though. Right? And so for Nietzsche, metaphysics are then like a step beyond values. Okay, so uh, science depends on the value of generating knowledge. But the practice of science itself can't tell us why to value that knowledge. Of course, if you were asked a real chemist, like a person, why this is worth pursuing, he might be able to give you an answer. He might be able to explain the value of something, but then he's not <coughs> answering it as a scientist. He's, he's, he's taking a critical perspective on what he does, but he's not doing a chemistry experiment to come up with an answer to the question, why value truth? So he's taking a step out of his role as scientist to try to answer that question, if you would. Um, so, sorry. So, science relies on values, at least the value of truth, but it can't, through its own practice, justify those values. Um, and in fact, Nietzsche says a few things praising the practice of science. And he says that um, uh, look on the line of seven, toward the bottom of, of one of seven, around line thirty, where he talks about honest scientists. Um, okay, so jumping ahead to 111, um, section 25. So, no, he says, don't give me science as an answer when I look for the natural antagonist of the ascetic ideal. When I ask where is the opposing will in which its opposing ideal expresses itself. In fact, he thinks, Science, modern science, emerges from the ascetic ideal. Um, that it is actually an expression of this kind of self-discipline um, that emerges from asceticism. And as asceticism collapses in a way that I'm about to describe to you, um, the commitment to the value of truth that science implicitly accepts without being able to justify is in danger of collapsing also. 
Okay. So science um, is is predicated on the, the practice of science is predicated on the unquestioning value of truth, the uncritical acceptance of the goal of truth. Nietzsche calls this the truth. And the will to truth, he wants to say now, I have to be very quick, is an expression of the will to power. It's a particular form that the will to power takes eventually under the aesthetic idea. Um, so I'll just go quickly here. Um, the will to truth is the ultimate product of the Christian con conscience. It is translated and sublimated into the scientific conscience, into intellectual cleanliness at any rate. And this commitment to intellectual precision and accuracy is a kind of self-discipline that we saw at the very beginning with the uh, um, moral psychologists. And this commitment to precision and accuracy, intellectual precision and accuracy, is what has led us through modern science to reject Christian metaphysics, to see that there is no God, to see that there is no other world. Uh, and this is the self-undermining of the moral system of values. So he says, Christianity has dogma perished of its own morality, that is, uh, metaphysics. In this manner of Christianity as morality must also so it's from the will to truth becoming conscience, conscience of itself that from now on morality will gradually perish. So it's the will to truth that's the product of asceticism. Let's start the other way around. Asceticism sublimates and redirects the will to power back in on itself. One of the products of that is the will to truth. The will to truth has now uncovered that the metaphysical basis for moral values is false. And now the entire thing is on the verge of collapse. This is the most terrible, most questionable, but also perhaps also the most hopeful of all spectacles. Because now perhaps we'll be able to find something to affirm other than simply self-denial. Um, okay, so, last point. So, um, through the ascetic ideal, suffering had a meaning, had a point, was explained. Um, and in this sense, he says, the will itself, by being redirected against oneself, was saved. Um, but now that we have through the will to truth, uncover what's really going on here, uh, we can no longer believe this in good conscience. Um, and so that's ultimately the meaning of this cryptic phrase that we would rather will nothing, nothingness, than not will. So the ascetic ideal is willing self-denial, is willing nothing. But that saved our will for these last 2,000 years by giving us something to strive for. Now that we can see that what is actually being willed is nothing, we can't accept this as credible. Okay, uh, sorry I went over a little bit too long, um, but um, I wanted to thank you for the class. And I am